Dan Johnson here at AirVenture Oshkosh. Once again, we're getting a chance to talk to Roger Duber today about the CH650. This is one of the best known airplanes in the light aircraft category, both LSA and kit built. Uh, Roger, welcome. You have flown both of these airplanes quite extensively. I, I flew with you in the 750 when we came to the factory and visit, and it was obvious that you're a very accomplished pilot of these airplanes. How many, how much hours you got in the two airplanes? Oh, I have well over thousands of hours in these airplanes, and, and it's, it's not a, the hours I've accumulated it's to take off from the landing. It's because <laughs> of the demo flights, is only last 15 minutes. Up, down, up, down, up, down, <laughs> yes. like you did with me, and you did it masterfully well. So. We're looking at the 650 here. The 750, I would characterize as kind of a bush airplane, a jeep of the sky. It is, it is. And this one's more of your sedan cruiser kind of airplane. Characterize the flying characteristics of the 650 compared to the 750 for us, Roger. Well, it does take a little bit more runway than the 750 to take off. It's a more normal takeoff, like any Cherokee or Piper, or Piper Cessna. Uh, but you do take off a lot quicker than any GA aircraft. Uh, it'll climb over a thousand feet a minute, and you can get it to cruise about 138 miles an hour. Now, I think you said on this one we're using the UL Power engine, this particular model we're in front of, and yeah, I think you told me you said it had 130 horsepower? Yes, 130 horsepower. It's a fuel injection, and uh, it's direct drive. So on this, uh, with this UL engine, you've got a really sexy looking cowl on this thing, made just for that engine, is it? Yes, it is. Uh, the cows are specific to the engines, and this is a UL 350 engine. You can put the, the smaller UL engines in you this You put a part. bunch of engines in this airplane, or more correctly, your builders can. Right. Uh, what all What all are their choices beside the UL power engine, Roger? Well, we like to we like to give the customer very many di very different options, like the Jabber, Rotax, Continental 0200, the Viking engine, <laughs> and the Corvair engine. And you can support all these engines. I'm amazed at that. Seems to me it's a lot of work, but I admire that you do because uh, Sebastian explained earlier that, well, it's experimental. If you can't experiment, that's kind of defeating the purpose, isn't it? So, exactly. Good for you guys for doing that. We know this airplane more popularly as the CH601, which had, I don't know, hundreds, thousands of them flying, but now it's the CH650. Obviously some differences. What kind of differences are we looking at here, Roger? Well, the major difference is, is in the canopy. The canopy is a larger canopy to allow more headroom, more visibility versus the 650 or 601. And it has a better latching system, it has a more positive latching system. The next uh, advantage is, uh, differences is, we've uh, changed the wing angle of the 650 versus the 601, so you have a little bit more forward visibility in level flight. Ah, I see, okay. This is an all metal airplane, is it, Roger? It's all metal, it's made out of 6061 T6 aluminum. Uh, everything's CNC cut, drilled, and uh, it's ready to assemble in about 500 hours. 500 hours, that's what it takes. Now, is that somebody who's really good at it or is that an average builder? That's a first time builder. That's a first time builder. That's a pretty low number for an airplane of this sophistication, I think. I like that. What do we got here, Roger? Well, what, there's an option in the kit if you want to put uh, wing locker baggage and you can hold up to 25 pounds in each wing. Wow. So you can put uh, all your- down there. It's, it's the whole thickness of this wing. It's pretty deep. Exactly. So you put a night Duffel bag in there or your tie downs. So we, we had to come and have a little, have a little better look at it. You can see, uh, this, uh, am I looking at the spar in there? Yes, that is the spar for the wings. So it's a pretty, I don't know, that's about 10 inches or so of depth. You can put a lot of stuff in there. Like what? Well, like an overnight duffel bag or your tie down rings or oil for your trip. Just not things you want in flight, huh? Right, right. A little hard to open a canopy and get in there. That's uh, one of the modifications you can do to this airplane if you're a builder of the airplane, as opposed to, let's say, a factory where you got to order all this stuff in advance. But I look out on the wing right behind you here, and I see the aileron's got an extra tab on it. Is this an optional item that you can do? Aileron option uh, trim cab kit, and what it's really handy for is you want to fine tune it for level flight and cross country, like the got a little bit too much fuel. If you burn out of one wing right. more than the other, I see. Exactly. Great. Well, let's talk about burn then on the fuel tanks. What are our fuel tank options on this airplane? And they're located right out here, I see, by the fuel cap. Exactly. It says 15 gallons there, so I'm assuming 30. Well, in the that's standard. That's the option or is that the standard? That's the option. In the kit, standard is two 12-gallon tanks, and they're welded aluminum tanks. And then the option is two 15s. So now we've climbed inside the cockpit of the CH650, and we're having a look at the panel. And what I see is all glass here, Roger. Is this the only way, or are there multiple options for builders on this as well? Oh no, you can. You don't have to go with glass. You can go with the steam gauges, but uh, more and more customers are going with uh, all the glass cockpit. Why not? All the information in the world on the Dynon here, and there are other brands I'm sure that you also support since you do that kind of thing. And I like the way you've done the big and the small. Almost everybody seems to make them both the same. Kind of neat. The passenger says, 
I can still follow along. And for you, you can put certain information over here that you'd like to have available. That is correct. Talk to me about controls now. I love the wide joystick. I always have. It's actually quite comfortable. It's good for both people. It's good for instruction then too, I suppose. It is. And it's our trademark. Uh, the, the center stick is our trademark. Most customers, when they look at it, they just don't think they can fly with the center stick. But once they take a 10 minute flight with me, they say there's there's no other option. But we do have an option for a dual stick between the legs. Ah, okay, but, you do you know, offer it both ways then. It makes it between the legs, you know, it's hard to get in and out. Something yep. was there, the passenger has something in their way. And I, I convince them that they'd like the center stick and after they fly, <laughs> they love it. Well, I have to admit, when I got in the airplane, nothing in your way here, just get right in. How about down here on the rudder pedals? Well, we have the rudder pedals, with uh, which comes with uh, a pilot's brakes, and then you have an option for uh, passing or dual brakes. Again, I think you said these are hydraulic on this one, Roger? They're hydraulic, and it's direct linked to the nose gear. Ah, great, okay. So, uh, the seats are really comfortable as I sit in it, and I kind of like them a lot because the, the seat cushion has quite an angle to it, which is, uh, you know, that Barca lounger kind of feel, supports your lower leg or the, uh, the lower portion of your thigh. And that gets important if you're gonna be in this airplane a while, because this can cruise for a few miles, right? Oh yes, I, I've had five hours of fuel on board and I have made many four hours, 30 minute flights. And once I get out, I'm fine. Excellent, so how about storage? If I wanna take stuff along with me, I see I got a lot of room back here. What's the capacity and is this where we, put the stuff we want to have available in flight. Yes, yeah, so you can have 40 pounds back here. 40 pounds. Of storage. And it's large, so you could carry sleeping bags or bulky stuff, as long as it wasn't too heavy. Uh, and that's a real nice advantage. Uh, how about ventilation? Uh, in, a, in a bubble canopy like this, it's big and beautiful. I see that, but I don't see any inlets here. How do we solve that problem? Well, for, for example, on today, it would be a hot day to taxi, and everybody says it would be so hot to taxi, but I always taxi with the canopy open. And so I get a ton of air in front of me as I'm taxiing. So in flight, then I have these NACA scoops on front with the eyelets. Ah, okay, so you can just point those wherever you need them. And looking forward here, I'm seeing directly underneath the canopy, so yeah, there'd be a lot of airflow. And we've been out here on a pretty windy day and the canopy's been up the whole time, and you haven't shown any anxiety about that. Oh, no, I, I, up to 30 knots, it's fine. Oh, wow, that's a lot. And so, uh, cruise speed in this airplane, stall speed, give me a couple of the highlight numbers that you tell someone when you took them up on a demo flight, Roger. Well, I have this one tricked out about 138 miles an hour. Oh, right just at the right top at of the category. Exactly. Huh? And then it stalls, oh, about 51 miles an hour. Excellent. So those are good numbers. Well, if we want to get more information about this airplane and the 750 and your floats, and I'm sure there's more that we could find, you got a great website. I've been all over. Where would you send people on the web? Go to zenithair.com. Zenithair.com. Okay, great. And I've had the pleasure to fly this airplane. I just got to fly with the 750 with Roger last year at the Mexico, Missouri plant, which is a very nice facility. And you got a big, you got a big event there too, don't you? We have our annual open house, which I believe it's the third Saturday of September, which I believe is September 22nd. And we, over in the past few years, we've developed and have seminars throughout the day. Oh. But now we're starting to have seminars on the day before, on Friday, starting at noon. And we'll have like seminars about how to build. How to build. Uh, we'll have uh, like Garmin, Dynon, engine manufacturers, all there telling about their product. Just kind of like a mini Oshkosh. Well, I've seen the pictures. You got a couple hundred people or more coming oh, to this thing, it's, right? It's probably a thousand. Wow. And uh, we have several builders flying in, probably 50 or 60 Zenith airplanes flying in. Excellent. So, zenithair.com. And uh, I've had, as I said, the pleasure to fly these airplanes. You can find more about that on bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining us here today at AirVenture Oshkosh.